Everyone is excited to see Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker this year, but we think the next villain the Bat should clash with on the big screen should be the Court of Owls. And a lot of you agree. So what makes the Court of Owls stand out as one of the best Batman stories in the past decade? It gives us a villain that you can't just throw in Arkham. For me, the Court of Owls represents some of my worst fears about history coming back to get you, not learning the lessons of the past, your home suddenly becoming terrifying to you and strange. The Illuminati-esque secret society turns one of Batman's biggest allies, the city of Gotham, against him. And the scale and impact of that is greater than threatening the people close to Batman or challenging him as a detective. I wanted it to feel like Gotham City was suddenly becoming mysterious to Bruce after this intense familiarity he had with it, which is why I start the story with him talking about what Gotham is, and he thinks he knows. That's why it begins that way. He's very confident. And he fights all of his classic villains really easily and takes them out. It's like he's at home just being in Gotham, even when he's fighting the worst villains there. And so it was important to me to have that story present and then weaponize and make terrifying all these different aspects of Gotham's history. And part of that is intertwined with the Wayne family. And the more I knew I could bring in the Wayne history, and the more I could make it new and mysterious, mysterious and scary, the more unsettling it would be to Bruce and the reader. If I could do it in such a way where the city was strange and new and terrifying 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, great. But if I could also show that the Waynes have been at odds with it for that long, and that all these other families might have been on the side of the Court of Owls, and then it would really destabilize everything we know about the Wayne family, Gotham, and Batman himself. Scott's inspiration for the story was born out of an experience with his own personal Gotham, New York City. You know, I grew up in the city and going back to my old neighborhood, I remember when I first got the gig on Batman and seeing it having changed so much and knowing I knew nobody there anymore. It was very scary all of a sudden seeing that kind of total transformation and I wondered, well, Batman knows Gotham right now. What about five years from now? What about five years ago? And if I could weaponize that and make a villain out of that, it would be powerful. It would be really unsettling to him. Court of Owls is a story designed around destabilization. The destabilization of Gotham, of Batman, and the reader. Issue number five is a fan favorite from the series because Snyder and Capullo were able to visually represent that destabilization. I remember Greg had been begging me to give him more room and more room and less you know, paneling, less tight direction. And that was the point where I was sort of trying to figure out what can I do, what effect can I describe that would give the reader the effect that Batman is really losing his mind. I was you know, let me ask Greg. So I loosened up the script and I said, for these pages, I don't know, I just want something that makes you feel crazy. Maybe something spinning in the comic, but like a, a swirl on the page. And Greg came up with this amazing idea to have the comic book physically invert that way and go all the way around. And DC initially fought us on. It. And Greg wrote this really impassioned email where he was like quoting Steve Jobs and going all over the place and he was like, be foolish. And I was like, what he said, what he said. It was the first time we behaved as a team that way too. That was the issue that people really took notice of and it got a lot of buzz. That buzz turned into booming applause from fans. In DC, they took notice. I remember when we were doing Court of Owls, we were about four or five issues in and we were at C2E2 uh, in Chicago. And I was standing next to Bob Harris, the editor in chief at DC, and somebody came up in this really elaborate talent costume with a homemade gauntlet and all of this stuff. And Bob turned to me after I had signed their book and he was like, you have a hit on your hands. We've seen the Court of Owls come to life on Gotham and in the animated movie Batman vs. Robin, but a TV show arc amongst other villains in a direct video release doesn't fully capture the ripe cinematic potential of the story. And we're not the only ones that have that opinion. I hope to see a better Batman than we've ever seen in the next three movies. I mean, there'll be Court of Owls, Batman Odyssey, Ra's al Ghul. And if somebody announced that list of, of movies, my mind would explode. I hope it inspires creators coming onto the book or that you dream of writing for Batman, that it's possible to make up new villains that have staying power, and that the key to doing that is to write about things that you're afraid of.